Okay, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is the idea of energy and what we mean by energy in physics. So you might remember from junior chemistry, you were taught, or junior science rather, you would have been taught uh, there are many forms of energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, nuclear, uh, chemical, etc. But in reality, uh, in mechanics, as far, um, anyways, we only really deal with kinetic energy and potential energy. That's the only thing we have to really think about. Um, and we, we define, if we assume one basic principle, um, one connection we, we use, which is that the force of a particle, um, or we'll say just the force, is equal to the negative derivative of the potential energy. So this is kind of a key idea that we use. And we say that with this, well, we, or we define the potential energy in this way. Um, and what the potential energy really is, is it kind of tells how a, how a body will move in the same way that a force would, such that when we were to let, let a body like move just according to its potential, we can see how it would move by graphing its potential. So, for instance, if we were to graph the, um, gra the gravitational potential energy of a particle. So the gravitational potential energy of, of a particle is minus gm, uh, GM um, over R. And if we were to graph this on the x-axis, so providing that R is if it's just moving in radially from one direction, for instance, we'll see that if this is the x-axis, or really the R axis, um, and this is V here, the particle will move in this type of direction. It will kind of asymptote here, and then go out forever trying to reach the horizontal axis here. So if we were to, and this is kind of a good idea when you're getting into solving mechanics problems here. Um, when you're getting into mechanics problems is to plot the potential energy of a function or of a body and then see how it'll, how that m might make it move. Like if we had a particle over here, it would slightly roll down the hill. And if you imagine um, this potential energy function as a kind of surface, you can see that it'll move down because it's always going to be moving slightly downhill until it reaches here. And then when it gets to a certain point, it'll move quite fast. Um, so we can imagine, like if we were to imagine a particle here, it would move towards here and almost roll down the hill, is what we could kind of think of it like. And if we were to imagine this as like a real world situation, uh, if you had a planet and some satellite or a moon um, a while away, they, uh, and there was nothing else around the area, the satellite or moon would eventually just be pulled directly towards the planet um, and nowhere else. If it wasn't move, if I had neither planet or neither the planet or the satellite were moving in any other way. Yeah, so when we're using potential energy a lot, um, we can't really say that it's conserved. Now you might have heard of like conservation of energy or whatever, but that, kind of, that will have to deal with energy in a total. So when, if we were to say put our particle or our ball here on our potential energy curve and it's rolling down, its potential energy will get lower and lower and lower and lower, but it will begin, begin picking up speed. So like if we were to even put uh, a ball on a real hill, it has high potential energy because of its distance from the Earth's uh, surface, but it will then roll and lower in its energy because it's getting closer to the surface but it will pick up uh, kinetic energy by virtue of its movement. So the general, uh, this is an example of uh, potential energy, but we usually just leave it as some function V when we're dealing with a lot of um, more or general cases. But our potential energy, or sorry, this is our potential energy here. Uh, 
for will be V. And this is an example of one. Uh, but our kinetic energy is almost always a half mv squared. Now this is, works in linear motion, so kinetic. It's slightly different when there are, for instance, um, when a body is rotating while it's moving, but for the time being, we can deal with a half mv squared. So we can then write the total energy. Now we'll, we won't use this uh, example, we'll use a general case of just v, and we can define this as, we'll call it h, for a reason that we'll go into later, as t plus v, the total energy. So this is the total energy here. Um, so we say this is a half mv squared plus v. We can say, we say that it's a vex. Um, Remind, remembering that it's a, a vector as well. So we can, uh, we can then take the time derivative of that, this total energy. So we can say this is h dot. We take the time derivative of v. So because uh, v is a function of t, so if we have v of t, if we were to then take the derivative of that squared with respect to time, we have to go to our old friend, the chain rule. So we take the derivative of the inside, which is v dot, and we multiply it with the derivative of the outside, which would be 2v. So now we have our derivative here as 2v times v dot, or a. And so plugging this in here, these twos will cancel out, and we'll be left with uh, MVA plus dV dt, where this V here is the potential energy. So we'll actually say that this is x dot, uh, if we keep this in one direction. So just to make sure we don't confuse the V and the x and the vo V being the potential energy and V being the velocity, we'll use x dot from here on out. So we are now attacking the derivative dv dt, where again, this is the potential energy. We can use the chain rule again, say this is dv dx times dx dt. And plugging this in, we can say that this here, this dv dx, this dv dx here, is minus the force from what we assumed up here. So we'll have minus the force times the velocity. So we can fit this back up here, and we'll have m x dot a minus, because it's minus here, f x dot. And using the fact that f equals ma, we write this as m x dot a minus m a x dot, which do indeed cancel out. So we're left with the time derivative of the total energy is equal to zero. And as you remember from the uh, topic of conservation of momentum, if we know that the time derivative of a quantity is zero, that means that quantity must be stationary or non-changing uh, throughout time. So now that, we proved that, now that we have proved that the total energy, the momentum out of the kinetic and potential energy is conserved throughout time. Okay, so now that we're done <clears throat> okay, so now that we're done dealing with uh, one dimension, we can have a look at what happens when we deal with energy in more than one dimension. And can we see if energy is still conserved in this way? So before we begin, it's, it's, we've defined how forces are and how they can impact motion. Uh, but this doesn't mean that it necessarily fits in with our previous definition to do with taking the derivative of the potential energy. Uh, for an example of this, we have to look at the likes of friction, uh, drag, et cetera. These are called non-conservative forces, and they can't be defined in this way. A, a good way of thinking about it is that a non-conservative force, the amount of um, motion it can create or stop, 
has to do with the path taken. So if I have a particle that is, say, five meters above the, uh, above the surface, and it drops and goes the whole five meters, that um, has a certain amount of acceleration throughout the entire way. But if I, it has a certain potential energy up here, which converts it to kinetic energy by the time it gets to the surface. Um, if I had a block here uh, of also five meters, uh, five meters in height, and I let the ball roll down, or the particle roll down here, without any amount of friction or whatever, it would have the same um, kinetic energy here. But if it had friction, it wouldn't. If the block here had uh, a coefficient of friction, it would not. And that would mean that if the ball took a longer path down, say, instead of going straight down, it took, it took a few turns, it would come down with a lower velocity at, at the end. So this is um, a key thing we have to understand before we move in, um, before we move into multiple direct or multiple dimensions. Okay, so now let's hop into looking at uh, energy in more than one dimension. So let's go back to how we define um, our force. So if we define our if we define our force F sub i equal to, as a function of all points x, is equal to m i, m sub i, times a sub i. Now, we don't mean i in this case as one particular particle or one particular direction. We mean that one particular particle and one particular direction. So if we had a system of n particles in 3D, in 3D space, we'd have 3n different i that all rely on something else. OK, so now that we have this definition, let's um, go back and have a look at how we define it in terms of the potential energy. So if we also had some potential energy v, which is also a function of set of all x, we could say that, that the negative partial derivative of this with respect to x i is equal to the force i. OK, so now that we have these two definitions, let's combine them by saying minus the partial derivative of v with respect to x i is equal to m i sub a i. And let's say we um, were to multiply both sides by v i. And while we're at it, well, let's convert from um, a v and x into x, x dot, and x double dot. So we'll have minus x dot of i times the partial derivative of v with respect to x i is equal to m i, m sub i, x dot sub i, x double dot sub i. And while we're at it, let's sum over all i's on both sides. So if you remember when we were doing uh, dealing with momentum, and when we had multiple systems of multiple particles, we wanted to sum over all of um, all the particles in all the directions. So this is what we're doing here. OK. So now that we have this little box here, so we can say that the sum over all i of minus x dot of I, x dot sub i times a partial derivative of v with respect to xi is equal to the sum of m sub i times x dot and sub i times x double dot sub i. OK, so now that we have this, let's just mark it off. And let's have a look at the, the kinetic energy. 
So we have t sub i is equal to a half n sub i x dot sub i squared. And let's have a look at taking the time derivative of the kinetic energy. So I have t sub i dot is equal to, again, bring the 2 down and then using the chain rule, we get m sub i um, x dot sub i x double dot sub i. Which, when we sum over and we find the total kinetic energy of the system, so we say that t then is equal to the sum over i of, or sorry, t, the total uh, time derivative of t is equal to the sum over i of all the individual time derivatives of t, which is then equal to the sum over i of mi x dot i times x double dot i. And we'll see this is going to be the same as this over here. Okay, so now that we have two of our equations, let's have a look at um, let's have a look at, at v in general. So if we have our v, and we want to, let's say we're taking the time derivative in this case, so v dot. Well, we could write this as say the sum over i. Now this remember this is v dot of all x, as a function of all x, remember? So if we have some i, if we sum over i, then of dv dt, we can then, ex or expand this using the chain rule, we can say this is the same as dv dx, dxi dt. Right, and now this is starting to look a little bit familiar. So we can say that this is now the sum. Oh, sorry, let me just. The sum over i of x dot sub i, which is coming from here, times dv dxi. And we'll notice that this is just a negative version of this. And so if we throw out a minus sign here, we'll have that minus v dot is equal to this. Right. And this is the final piece we need because moving back over to the, to the green box here, we can say, we can now sub this in as minus v. So here, we can sub that in on the left hand side. So we'll get that minus v dot rather is equal to, and on the right hand side, we have this t dot. So this can tell us there that t dot plus v dot is equal to zero, or this, the time derivative of t plus v, which we can use because of the sum rule, is equal to zero. And so, We've shown that the total momentum of this, or the total energy of the system, kinetic plus potential, is conserved. Okay, so now we're going to be going into a thing called the principle of least action. This is where we move on into uh, starting into Lagrangian formulation of mechanics. The principle of least action is one of the more fundamental laws of the universe. It shows us how things move in a very particular way that makes our lives so much more easy. So the way that we can think of it in a certain, um, in a certain mindset is that we want to take the initial conditions and the final conditions and, and see what happens in between. And that's how we're kind of modeling, um, modeling uh, motion or movement or anything like this. So if you think of it like a, almost like a geometry problem, well, the idea is that if you have, say, a grid here, um, and you want to go from let's say, initial conditions here at the, at the origin to some over here, some point over here, we'll call it 
x1, t1, and x0, t0 here. Right, so when you think of probably the easiest geometric way of doing it, you could just say, right, we'll start from, from the origin here, and we'll go in this certain direction for this amount of time, and eventually we'll reach where we want to go. And this is kind of where we've been, uh, what we've been doing recently, is that we take our initial condition and our situation that we're in, and we'll say, go out, and we'll reach this where we want to. Sorry, this is x1, t1 here. Um, another way to think about it is we have our starting position and we have our ending position, and what, it, what, it in, what we can do in between doesn't matter too much. We could draw some squiggly line or so, um, and this is kind of what we're going to be going into. But this squiggly line here is going to be whatever path minimizes the action. So this is the idea that we're going with now. Okay, so when we're dealing with the action mathematically, we're going to need a definition for it. So we define um, the action, we'll call it S, although it's also sometimes noted as this kind of A, but generally we'll use an S for it. So we can define the, or the action here as the integral from a certain time t0 to a certain time t1 of the Lagrangian with respect to time. So this is going to be a lot of new things. So we have here the action. And we have here the Lagrangian. Now, the Lagrangian of a uh, system is a simple enough idea. It's, we define it pretty easily as L, the Lagrangian, equals T, the kinetic energy, minus V, the potential energy. So we would normally use this if we were, for instance, if we were going to model a normal mechanical, uh, say, a ball dropping, or, or one, a problem with this, we might have that this, the... Lagrangian L is a half mv squared uh, minus some central function v of x, for example. Um, now, usually the, the, the Lagrangian is usually of some form L as a function of x and x dot. It combines, the only real variables usually it has is x and x dot, at least for now. It will get a tad bit more complicated with some uh, time dependence, but for now we can think of it as a function of the position and the velocity. Um, so the, the principle of least action seems to almost have like a supernatural ability to take a particle at a certain point and predict what it will do in the future. It almost like, it's almost like it kind of decides then and there what it's going to do. Obviously, this isn't really supernatural, but it can be a tad bit uh, difficult to fully understand. So in this case, we're not minimizing the action like we would normally minimize a function, like if you were to minimize some polynomial or so, it, because it's not, a fun it's not a function in that way. We don't, we, know, we don't have a finite amount of equations that we can differentiate, set equal to zero, and so forth. We need to minimize um, the action, which takes in uh, an infinite number of variables. It kind of takes, it takes into account every single coordinate that could be um, on the trajectory and sees, could not the particle go through this or not? And then if not, obviously it, um, the trajectory doesn't end up going along that line. 